Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. I am AKS Rajveer, top educator on an academy for NTA UGC NET English. So dear learners, this is the video. In this video, I am going to talk about age of Chaucer. And dear learners, I know you have already watched this video on an academy platform. But on YouTube, I am going to add something more important because I think I have left some important facts, some important points on my Unacademy special class. So I am going to add in this video. So I hope you are going to like this video and you are going to stay tuned with me till the end of the video. So dear learners, first of all, we must talk about what was the historical background of age of Chaucer? Yes, first of all, we must know what was the historical background or you can say major incident during age of Chaucer. So dear learners, you have during age of Chaucer, there were four major incidents. So one of them first was 100 years of war. And this war was between England and France. So dear learners, this was more than this war takes more than 100 years. But we say in simple language, you can say that this was 100 years of war. So then this was started in 1338 and ended in 1453. And then we have next major incident and this is Black Death and Black Death Somewhere you will also find 1347 to 1351 and somewhere you will find 1348 to 1349. So dear learners, here if you have black death ki exactly, if I am going to talk about the exact age of or exact time period of black death. So then I would like to say ki this was the time uh, 1347 to 1351. And then we have next one. So this is Lollard's moment. And what was Lollard's moment? I am going to tell all about Lollard's moment in my upcoming slides. And then we have next one. So this is Peasant's Revolt. That was one of the biggest incident of this era. So dear learners, in next slide, we have Lollard's moment. So what was basically Lollard's moment? First of all, we must know. So dear learners, Lollards, this was a group of anti-clerical English Christians who lived between the late 13th and the early 15th century. They were followers of John Wycliffe. Who were they? So they were followers of John Wycliffe. On, uh, who were uh, John Wycliffe? So John uh, Wycliffe was an Oxford theologian and he was also a Christian reformer. Who translated Bible into vernacular English or you can say Bible he translated Bible into English and dear learners uh, uh, Wycliffe also got some followers outside the Oxford and he was expelled from Oxford so dear learners this was a kind of anti-clerical English Christian so you can say a kind of group and then we have next one incident. So this was Black Death. So dear learners, Black Death, that is really important. So we must talk about Black, Black Death. So Black Death, it was also known as Bubonic Plague. Yes, it was also known as Bubonic Plague. And dear learners, this was reached in, in England June 1348. And then we have next one. So this is, it was the second pandemic. Yes. And the bacteria that was the, that was the uh, region behind this plague. So the back, name of that bacteria is Yersinia pestis. What is the name of that bacteria? So this is Yersinia pestis. And dear learners, this black death, or you can say uh, this, uh, uh, this plague, this plague finished the finished the you can say uh, 30 to 40 percent yes 30 to 40 percent population of england so this was really really a very big incident 
and do you learn us the time period exact time period if we are talking about exact time period of black death so you can say this was 1347 to 1350 in this time during the age of chaucer black death came in england so do you learn you can also find some evidence in works uh, like uh, in chaucer's work in uh, boccaccio's work so do you learn they have also ev uh, created evidence of this so then we have next one point so this is peasants revolt so what is this peasants revolt so do you learn this is really a great uh, you can say a big question so this this revolt is also known as wet taylor rebellion or the great rising in 1381 and reason behind this rising was political and you can say uh, another reason you also have this was the black death due to black death the uh, jo london ke london ki jo ye kahe ki population thi ya europe ki jo population thi at that time so मैंने आपको बताया कि just it was finished almost thirty to forty percent and then black death created a great upheaval during this era and then you have a uh, hundred year war so hundred year was a great region behind this revolt because कि जो हंड्रेड ईयर वॉर हुआ एट दैट टाइम बहुत सारे मनी एंड ऑल जो रिसोर्सेज थे वो इंग्लैंड के क्या हुए स्पेंड हुए पैसे खत्म हुए सो देन यू हैव कि बहुत सारे लोगों ने आवाज उठाई सो so, जो बहुत सारे लोग थे उन्होंने जो आवाज उठाई सो so, वो हाई टैक्सेस क्योंकि जो वहां के जो किंग थे एक्चुअली में सो so, उन्होंने बहुत ज्यादा टैक्स इंप्लीमेंट कर दिए थे किन के ऊपर इंग्लैंड के लोगों के ऊपर सो डियर लर्नर्स दिस वॉज द टाइम पीरियड जहां पर लोगों ने बात उठाई और दोस्तों ये अगर हम देखें कि अगर कोई टैक्स इफ समन इज नॉट गोइंग टू पे द टैक्स सो ये एक लीगल इन्वेस्टिगेशन भी था सो so, बहुत सारे जो रॉयल ऑफिशियल्स थे एनऑल जाते थे और बहुत ज्यादा वसूल करने की कोशिश करते थे सो so, दिन जो वेट टैलर एक नाम का एक जो व्यक्ति था उसने बहुत ज्यादा और वैसे भी ये जो रिबेलियंस थे इन रिबेलियंस ने काफी ज्यादा काफी ज्यादा काफी ज्यादा जो वहां के रिसोर्सेस थे उनको हार्म किया वेसेक्स एंड ऑल से ये शुरू हुआ था सो so, दिन कुल मिलाकर के इसेक्स नॉट वेसेक्स इट्स ई सेक्स ई डबल एस ई एक्स इसेक्स से शुरू हुआ था सो दिन जॉन बम्पटन एंड ऑल जो कुल मिलाकर के हम फिगर्स एंड ऑल को देखते हैं और जो वहां के किंग थे रिचार्ड सेकेंड सो रिचार्ड सेकेंड ने डायरेक्टली जो आ, ये रेवोल्यूशनरी थे जो रिवोल्ट करने वाले थे तो उनसे डायरेक्टली उन्होंने मीटिंग की बट कंक्लूजन नहीं निकला और जो वेट टैलर था सो एटलीस्ट जो वो वेट टैलर था सो एक्चुअली में उसको जब रिचार्ड सेकेंड के सामने बुलाया गया क्योंकि एट दैट टाइम जो रिचार्ड सेकेंड थे ओनली फोर्टीन ईयर के थे उनके सामने आए लेकिन उसने जो किंग था किंग की कोई रेस्पेक्ट एंड ऑल नहीं की सो वहीं पर वेट टैलर को मारा गया था दोस्तों बहुत बड़ी कहानी है अगर मैं इस पर जाऊं बट वी आर प्रोसीडिंग टू द नेक्स्ट वन स्लाइड सो दिस वॉज अ काइंड ऑफ रिवोल्ट दैट अपियर्ड इन थर्टीन एटी वन थर्टीन एटी वन देन वी हैव नेक्स्ट पॉइंट जहां हमें बात करनी चाहिए सो डियर लर्नर्स आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट एज ऑफ चौसर सो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल अबाउट चौसर सो वट वॉज द पोइट्री ड्यूरिंग एज ऑफ चौसर सो इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू कवर विद यू सो यस आई एम गोइंग टू कवर विद यू द ओनली ओनली चौसर एंड देन वी हैव लैंग लैंड एंड देन वी हैव जॉन गोवर सो आई एम गोइंग टू कवर दीज थ्री फिगर इन दिस वीडियो सो नाउ यू कैन से सो जियोफ्री चौसर ही इज ऑल्सो नोन एज हीज ही इज ऑल्सो नोन एज यू कैन से फादर ऑफ इंग्लिश लिटरेचर फादर ऑफ इंग्लिश पोइट्री एंड ऑल so uh, i have already told you he lived uh, he lived during the reign of three kings and th these kings are edward iii then you have richard ii and then you have henry iv so these were the king during their reign he was living and then um, 
ही वॉज द सन ऑफ अ प्रॉस्परस वाइन मर्चेंट और यू कैन से जोफ्री चौसर्स फादर ही वॉज अ प्रॉस्परस वाइन मर्चेंट एंड प्रोबेबली ही वॉज बोर्न इन थर्टीन फोर्टी एंड ही लाइफ टिल फोर्टीन हंड्रेड एंड ही हैज रिटर्न हिज वर्क इन थ्री लैंग्वेजेस एंड दीज थ्री लैंग्वेजेस आर फ्रेंच देन यू हैव इटालियन एंड देन इट्स इंग्लिश सो इन तीन भाषाओं में इन तीन लैंग्वेजेस में उन्होंने अपनी राइटिंग की और इवन की उन्होंने काफी आ, काफी ज्यादा उन्होंने ट्रैवल भी किया वो ट्रैवल जेनवा की रही हो फ्लोरेंस की रही हो और देन उन्होंने जो मैरिज की थी सो द नेम ऑफ हिज वाइफ इज फिलिप्पा रोड व्हाट इज द नेम ऑफ हिज वाइफ सो सी इज फिलिप्पा रोड एंड ही वॉज क्वींस हाउस होल्ड यस सी वॉज क्वींस हाउस होल्ड ओके सो देन वी आर प्रोसीडिंग एंड यू ऑल्सो हैव की ही हैज अ पैटर्न नेम जॉन ऑफ गाउंट व्हाट इज द नेम ऑफ हिज पैटर्न सो दिस इज जॉन ऑफ गाउट एंड देन वी आर प्रोसीडिंग टू नो सम मोर इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्ट बिकॉज he was the first you can say chaucer was the first he was buried in westminster abbey yes you have westminster abbey and westminster abbey is also known as poets corner what is what is the another name of westminster abbey so another name for westminster abbey is poets corner and then we have his language or you can say his dialect is known as east midland dialect so dear learners never forget what so never you must never forget he found english a dialect and left it a language yes he found english a dialect and left it a language yes dear learners he said uh, lob said about him he found english a dialect and left it a language okay and uh, dryden also says something about him so dryden says that uh, chaucer found english a uh, yes so dear learners we have a statement he found english a dialect and left it a language about geoffrey chaucer lord sage who says about geoffrey chaucer so l o w e s lord sage about geoffrey chaucer that he found english a dialect and left it a language because east midland dialect this is the dialect of geoffrey chaucer he found english a dialect but left it a language but dear learners you have to remember don't be confused with the uh the, with the matching statement this is he found it it means english brick and left it marble and this is the statement by johnson on dryden never we confuse with the same statement he found it uh, it or you can say he found english brick and left it marble so this is the statement johnson on dryden and this this is the statement he found english a dialect and left it a language this is a statement by lobs then you have the well of english undefined who says spencer says about him and then you have next one statement with him is born our real poetry yes with him is born our real poetry spencer praises him so dear learners geoffrey chaucer was one of the geoffrey chaucer was one of the best one of the best english poet and first english poet too and dear learners we have this is the statement the prologue to modern fiction prologue to the canterbury tale who says this is a kind of prologue to the modern fiction this is the statement by william j long famous historian he has written history of english literature this is the book by william j long and here is god's plenty this is dryden he says here is god's plenty and dryden also says a rough diamond what please note down if you have your copy so please note down a rough diamond a rough diamond and must first you have to uh, note down this statement because really this is really important 
सेवरल टाइम आपके एग्जाम में पूछा जाता है सो दिस इज अ रफ डायमंड एंड मस्ट फर्स्ट बी पॉलिस्ड अर ही साइंस दिस इज द स्टेटमेंट दिस इज एन अदर स्टेटमेंट बाई ड्राइडन फॉर चार्सर सो देन यू हैव अ रफ डायमंड एंड मस्ट फर्स्ट बी पॉलिस्ड अर ही साइंस and you can say he was really influenced chaucer was really influenced from uh, you have dante and then you have boccaccio and and uh, you have a famous sonneteer he was petrarch so dosto inse kafi zyada wo greatly influenced the and even agar hum dekhe so hum chaucer ko not only father of english poetry you can we can also say that he was grandfather of english novel because um, अगर चौसर ने अपने वर्क जो उनका एक वर्क है ट्रॉयलिस एंड क्रेसिड सो ट्रॉयलिस एंड क्रेसिड को अगर उन्होंने रियली प्रोज में लिखा होता सो आई थिंक कि वो पहला बेहतरीन एक नॉवेल होता ऐसा दोस्तों क्योंकि पामेला पहला रिचार्डसन का पामेला पहला नॉवेल माना जाता है और ऐसा कहा है एस डी नील ने आपको याद रखना चाहिए एस एंड देन यू हैव डी एंड देन यू हैव एन ई आई एल एस डी एन ई आई एल एस डी नील ने कहा है कि अगर हैड चौसर रिटर्न इन प्रोज इट इज पॉसिबल हिज ट्रॉयलिस एंड क्रेसिडो एंड नॉट रिचार्डसन पामेला वुड बी सेलिब्रेटेड एज फर्स्ट इंग्लिश नॉवेल एस डी नील दिस इज द स्टेटमेंट बाई एस डी नील एंड देन यू हैव इन फेयरी क्वीन इन फेयरी क्वीन एडमंड स्पेंसर एडमंड स्पेंसर से इज द वेल ऑफ इंग्लिश अनडिफाइंड दिस इज द स्टेटमेंट द वेल ऑफ इंग्लिश अनडिफाइंड सो डियर लर्नर्स वी हैव अ नंबर ऑफ स्टेटमेंट अ नंबर ऑफ कमेंट ऑन जियोफ्री चौसर एंड अर्नोल्ड ऑल्सो समथिंग सेज अबाउट हिम यू हैव मैथ्यू अर्नोल्ड सो वॉट ही सेज चौसर लैक्स नॉट ओनली द एसेंट ऑफ दांते Chaucer lacks not only the ascent of Dante but also the high seriousness. Yes, not only the ascent of Dante but also high seriousness. So th th these are the word, and uh, you have uh, another um, statement by others too. But uh, I'm I'm going to discuss with you whatever uh, is written in your screen. So Chaucer's hum humor is a humor in grand style. Who said so? G.K. Chesterton says Chaucer's humor is a humor in which style? In grand style. In grand style. And G.K. Chesterton also says about him: If Chaucer is the father of English poetry, this is also another statement. If Chaucer is the father of English poetry, he is the grandfather of English novel. This is the statement by G.K. Chesterton, and then you have um, other statements too. But I am not going to discuss with you more and more statement. Chaucer was the night star of the farm. Yes, he was the night star for the farmers, but morning sun for the later poets, later writers, or you can say he was future of English literature. Okay, yes. and then now we are going to proceed uh, i'm going to quote matthew arnold he said chaucer is the earliest of the great moderns yes he was earliest of the great moderns chaucer was earliest of the great mer modern uh, yes great moderns you must note down these all statement because uh, because these statements are really important and uh, uh, one another statement we have albert called chaucer the earliest of of great moderns albert also says and he say, he added the morning star of renesa edward albert famous historian he says the morning star of renesa so dear learners these are the really important st statement and then we have father of english poetry first great modern uh, and then we have the first great national poet first great english storyteller in words yes we can say Chaucer was first uh, great storyteller because before Chaucer no one 
was there to tell you the stories and he was the first he has uh, he has pictured his character so beautifully uh, you can see in his work like uh, uh, pro uh, prologue to the canterbury tale and then the first painter of character yes he was first printer of uh, painter of character first great english humorist he was also great humorist and he was also man observer of human nature great yes this is really important because he was really he was really uh, observing the human nature if if he is going to write about person or you can say uh, wife of bath or you have reeve and also um, any one character from canterbury tale you can take so agar wo kisi bhi character ke bare mein write karte hain so he is going to deeply observe human nature and he is also known as the grandfather of english novel i have already told you because uh, i am not saying so gk chesterton and uh, and others you can say uh, like uh, i have already mentioned the name sd nail sd nail also says about him and father of english literature and first writer buried in poets corner so these are really important facts regarding geoffrey chaucer and now we are going to uh, talk about his uh, famous period and this was the period french period yes i am going to talk about french period because he has written in three languages and these are french then you have latin and then then he has written in english and that was the last period so if i am going to talk about french period so during this time chaucer translated uh, one french poem and this is roman de la rose this is the poem roman de la rose and uh, he has uh, he has written this poem uh, uh, in yes he has written, uh, written this poem in 1360 this was the period roman de la rose so this was the period 1360 1360 you we have so uh, i'm going to write it so 1360 this was the period when he's right uh, he uh, he has written this work and this is really important and uh, dear learners this period was not mature period um, and then uh, another work you can also see in this period in french periods he has written the book of duchess and this book is really important so now first of all i am going to talk about roman of the rose that was 1316 this was uh, this work was appeared in in this period so uh, if i am going to talk about roman of the rose so originally this work was written by jean de meun and gulem de loris these two are french yes these are these two are french authors and now now i am going to once more mention uh, i am going to mention these two names so jean de meun and then you have gulem de loris so these were two author french author who has written le roman de la rose and this is a really translation of that work by geoffrey chaucer and this uh, this uh, period was really uh, you can say uh, really immature period for geoffrey chaucer and he was trying to write some uh, uh, some work of importance and this uh, Uh, this is story uh, roman of the rose begins with an allegorical dream in which the narrator receives advice from the god of love on gaining his lady's favor her love being symbolized by a rose he is unable to get that rose so dear learners this is a kind of this is the story of this work and uh, it also has uh, uh, you can say it has 5000 line 5000 5000 line says work me the roman of the rose me and this work is really important and then uh, we are going to proceed to see the next one work i am not going to give you the detail uh, detail of this works but uh, this work but uh, uh, here you can see the influence of french and other writers in this period and now we have next one work and this is this is the work the book of duchess and this work was appeared in 1369 yes the book of duchess as name shows so this is a book about um about uh, dealing with the subject of death of duchess of blanche and john, uh, and uh, she was wife of john of gaunt and john of gaunt was the patron yes he was patron of geoffrey chaucer 
जॉन ऑफ गाउट यू नोज वेरी वेल कि वो पैटर्न थे जो फ्री चौसर के एंड जो डसेस ऑफ ब्लैंड से थी सो सी वॉज वाइफ ऑफ जॉन ऑफ गाउट एंड सी बिलोंग्स टू लैंकेस्टर फैमिली Yes, and this work, this book contains some elegical, uh, elegiac notes and ele uh, allegorical nature. Yes, and uh, uh, this work, uh, in this work, Chaucer has used Ottawa rhyma, and this was the first time. This was the first time he has used in this Ottawa rhyma in his work. And dear learners, you can say. Um, the story of this work the book of duchess begins when a man is not able to sleep and he is heavy in thought and he is uh, he is fantasizing everything and he is uh, disturbing he is not able to sleep for 8 years and this is this is a kind of beginning of this work and he fears he will die of his insomnia due to his this work uh, due to his not sleeping so he may die so this is a kind of beginning of this work and then we have next one uh, next one work so this is uh, the another work from french period you can say so there there is there are another work like the complaint of marx and they we have then we have complaint into pity and then we have the a b c and uh, i'm going to tell you something more important so rhyme royal first time yes first time he has uh, using ottawa rhyma in his work the book of duchess i have already told you ottawa o t t a v a ottawa and then we have r i m a this is ottawa rhyma in his the book of duchess and rhyme royal first time first time jo geoffrey chaucer ne rhyme royal use kiya so that is the work the uh, complaint into pity in this work he has first time using rhyme dear learners we have italian period yes italian period and in italian period he has direct influence or you can say a kind of personal contact with great personalities like patrak dante boccaccio and his important work in this period are the parliamenta fauls troilus and cressid then house of fame and then we have uh, the legend of good women so these are the really important work from it italian period and this period uh, this the, the timing of this period is 1372 to 85 this is the time period of uh, yes this is the italian time period of his writing and in this period he was going to mature his make mature his writing so now i am going to talk about his uh, one uh, works one by one so this is the first the very first work that is i am going to talk about this is troilus and cressid and this is really important work dosto aapke jo pichla exam december 2019 ka hua so wahan par ek question tha ki jo हेक्टर कैरेक्टर है सो हेक्टर कैरेक्टर कहाँ पर अपीयर होता है सो डियर लर्नर्स हेक्टर कैरेक्टर ट्रॉयलस एंड क्रैसिड सो नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यू समथिंग ट्रॉयलस एंड क्रैसिड इट्स अ लॉन्ग पोएम एंड दिस इज एडोप्टेशन ऑफ बोकैसियोज इल फिलेस्टोरेटो यस इल फिलेस्टोरेटो बाई बोकैसियो एंड दिस इज बेस्ट नवरेटिव वर्क इन rhyme royal stanza yes this is best narrative work in rhyme royal stanza and it indicate chaucer's growing insight into human motives now his writing was going to be mature so he was trying to write all about the experiences of his life and in this work he recounts the love story of troilus he was the son of trojan king priam and cressid widowed daughter of the deserter priest calchas so dear learners this is a love story troilus and cressid uh, cressid is a long poem but it's a love story and in this work yes you will find the characters like hector and all and this work also depicts a trojan was to and at the end of the poem you will find when troilus soul rises into the heaven the folly of complete immersion in the sexual love is contrasted with the eternal love of god 
and uh, now i am going to tell you the another work and this is parliament of foul this is another work uh, during italian period uh, italian period and the this work was appeared in 1813 yes we have 1382 yes 1382 yes i am going to write so 13 82 yes this the parliament of fowls and this work contains how many lines are there so 699 lines are there in this work the parliament of fowl and uh, you can say this was the uh, this was the composition in uh, in you can say french tradition or you can say the that the tradition of french romances yes this was a kind of uh you can say depiction and this work is really important because in this work you will find two more important character richard ii and anne of bohemia and you will also find the mentioning of what so you will also find the mentioning of uh, yes that is really yes that is really important and this is saint valentine's day yes in this work you will find the depiction or you can say mention uh, there is the mentioning of saint valentine day and this work is written in rhyme royal stanza and now i am going to proceed to tell you uh, to talk about on the next work and this is the house of fame the house of fame that was appeared in 1380 80 yes 1380 was the period when this work was appeared and this work was directly yes this work is directly influenced from influenced from dante and dante's divine comedy yes dante's divine comedy jo dante ka divine comedy work hai usse ye directly influenced hai and this is a, a kind of unfinished dream yes unfinished dream allegory type work hai jo unfinished hai or uh, how many books are there so you can say there are three books have having 2158 lines 2100 and you can say 58 lines in oct to slabic yes in octo slabic so this is the work and then we have the next work so this is the legend of good women so this is really important the legend of good women so in this work his major intention was only to tell 19 tales of virtuous women of antiquity yes virtuous women of antiquity in this work and this work was appeared in 1385 this is the really important work by jeffrey chaucer and this work was appeared in 1385 and how many tales he was going to mention so yes 19 tales but unfortunately this is unfinished work this is unfinished work and unfinished work by jeffrey chaucer and only eight tales are completed they were a ninth only begun and you will find these eight uh, eight nine tales about cleopatra then we have thisbe dido uh, and then we have uh, hesperpel and then media lucrece then aridon clomela and then phyllis happen minister so dosto ye jo characters thi yani ki jo uh, women of antiquity jo great characters thi so unko inhone depict kiya aur uh, yahan par mujhe ek baat aur mujhe bahut important batana chahiye because this is a dream vision of jospri chaucer yes and uh, then we have uh, uh, some more important things regarding this uh, this work so this work was written on the request of in of bohemia and then we have english period yes now we are going to proceed on uh, english period so english period in english period we will find one of the most important work and this is really important and this is 17000 lines wrong 17000 lines hai is work mein and this is canterbury tale absolutely this is canterbury tales and this this period was really important in his life 
बिकॉज इन दिस पीरियड इन इंग्लिश पीरियड ही वॉज गोइंग टू राइट थ्रू हिज मेच्योरिटी सो डियर लर्नर्स दिस इज अ कैंटरबरी टेल दैट कंटेन सेवनटीन थाउजेंड लाइन्स एंड इन दिस वर्क ही विस टू कंटेन यस ही विस टू कंटेन सम इंपॉर्टेंट कैरेक्टर ट्वेंटी नाइन कैरेक्टर्स बट देर वर टू मोर कैरेक्टर राइटर एंड हैरी वेली सो यू कैन से दे मे बी थर्टी वन so uh, yes in this work if we are going to talk about there are mentioning of only 29 characters yes and yes and then now i am going to tell you something more important this is a work that is influenced from boccaccio's decameron yes you have to note down this point this work is influenced from boccaccio's decameron yes this may be the question in your exam so please आप ध्यान रखें और कितनी टेल्स हैं जो अभी आपके एग्जाम में लेटेस्ट क्वेश्चन आपके एग्जाम में बना था सो दैट इज कि हाउ मेनी टेल्स आर देयर एंड हाउ मेनी पिलग्रिम्स सो 23 पिलग्रिम्स एंड 24 टेल्स आर अवेलेबल एंड यू कैन से 20 ओनली 20 टेल्स आर कंप्लीटेड एंड 4 आर इनकम्प्लीट सो डियर लर्नर्स नेवर फॉरगेट ये हमेशा पॉइंट आपको याद रखना चाहिए and dear learners uh, in prologue to the canterbury tale chaucer has employed heroic couplet yes heroic couplet and this is an unfinished work yes at chaucer's death yes this is an unfinished work and these pilgrims uh, you can say pilgrims are going to uh, going to shrine of martyr saint thomas becket thomas becket same person whose uh, who, uh, whose uh, means uh, mention you will find in ts eliot's play that is murder in cathedral that was appeared in 1935 so yes there were also question in your exam from ts eliot's work and uh, now i am going to tell you something more important regarding this work so this is a kind of a 14th century portrait gallery yes this is a work uh, not only a work but this is a kind of portrait gallery of different section of people so you have a number of character in this work and now i am going to tell you they was going to start his uh, their pilgrims a uh, pilgrimage from tabard in yes they were they were collected on tabard in and they um, they also make a uh, you can say uh, make a plan to uh, to every uh, to, yes they also make a plan yes unhone ek plan banaya and then what they said ki uh, har ek person जो भी पिलग्रिम्स हैं जितने भी पिलग्रिम्स हैं दो कहानियां आते वक्त और दो कहानियां जाते वक्त यानी कि हर एक पिलग्रिम्स दो दो कहानियां आते वक्त और दो कहानियां जाते वक्त कंप्लीटली सुनाएगा सो so दोस्तों ये कुल मिलाकर के उनकी एंड द बेस्ट स्टोरी जो बेस्ट स्टोरी जो भी सुनाएगा सो so उसको लौट करके टबर्ड इन पर डोंट फॉर्गेट कि ये टबर्ड इन पर क्या मिलेगा दोस्तों जो साउथ वॉक में है उसको सपर दिया जाएगा सो दिस वॉज अ काइंड ऑफ प्लान ऑफ द ऑफ द पिलग्रिम्स एंड देन वी हैव अ नंबर ऑफ टेल्स इन दिस वॉक सो सम कैरेक्टर आई एम गोइंग टू इंट्रोड्यूस सो मिलिट्री फ्रॉम मिलिट्री प्रोफेशन वी हैव अ नाइट देन वी हैव अ स्क्वायर एंड देन यू मैन एंड देन फ्रॉम एक्लेस्टिकल्स यू कैन से एक्लेस्टिकल सो यू हैव प्रायर इज अ नन अ मॉन्ग अ फ्रायर अ समनर अ पार्टनर a a poor, a poor person a clerk of oxford so you can say from a classical society you have eight character from military profession there were three character and there are two two prose tale that are really important so first tale is tale of melibius yes this is chaucer's own tale and then you have another tale this is parson's tale yes next one tale is parson's tale and then you have knight's tale this is finest as a narrative poet and begins with yes you have to note down ki jo chaucer ki canterbury tale hai that begins with knight's tale yes this is finest work as a narrative poet and this is very first work or you can say very first tale in canterbury tale 
एंड इंस विद पार्सन स्टेल एंड पार्सन स्टेल इज इन प्रोज स्टाइल पी फॉर प्रोज सो यस पी फॉर प्रोज सो यू आर गोइंग टू रिमेंबर दिज ऑल इंपॉर्टेंट एंड यू हैव चौसर ऑन टेल सो टेल ऑफ सर टॉप एंड देन यू हैव टेल ऑफ मिलीबियस सो दीज आर टू टेल्स बाई जियोफ्री चौसर If I am going to introduce with you in short, so how many characters are there? So you have plowman. So uh, he would help the poor for the love of Christ and never take a penny. Yes, plowman. He never takes a penny. About plowman, Chaucer says he would pay his taxes regularly. This is really important about plowman. And then we have next one. So he is host. Bold in his speech, yet wise, yet wise and full of tact. No manly attribute he lacked. Merry-hearted man. And then we have Sumner. So he loved garlic, onion, leeks, and drinking strong wine till he was. he till he was lazy then he would shout and jabber as if crazy and would not speak a word except in latin when he was drunk so he was summoner and then we have friar so he knew the taverns well in every town and every inn keeper bar me too better than leapers beggars and the crew kept his trip it stuffed with pins forkles and pocket knives to give to pretty girls and then most important character and this is wife of bath she liked to love and chat and knew the remedies of love's mischances and art in which she knew the oldest dances so these are a few character from this work we have the knight the square the human the prioress yes you can note down the knight the square the you man and then the prioress the second nun and then we have a nuns priest the monk and then we have character the friar the merchant the clerk of oxford the sergeant of law and then we have next character this is uh, the franklin the her uh, herbal dasher then we have the carpenter the weaver the dryer the tapestry maker so we have completed 17 you can note down these all character so next one is the cook the ship man and then the doctor of physic and then the wife of bath and then we have the parson the plowman the miller and the reeve the mansiple the summoner and the pardoner harry valley and then geoffrey chaucer and host you can say so these all are uh, these are all character from canterbury tale and if you you want to learn these all character in detail you can write me on comment box and now we are proceeding to see the next poet this, this is the next poet from age of chaucer so who is next so we have john gower yes he was yes a uh, friend of geoffrey chaucer yes he was friend of geoffrey chaucer and then uh, we have another thing that he uh, the uh, work troilus and cressid yes the work troilus and cressid is dedicated to moral gower so they would be confused with the uh, spelling this is gower g o w e r yeah and then we have uh, he has written the work speculum meditantis and this is uh, this is a kind of yes french work speculum meditantis so this is a uh, uh, yes you can say this is a a uh, french work and then uh, we have next one work that is vox clementis so this is latin work yes this is latin work and then we have next one so that is confessio amentis and this is you can say english work so we have three works that are really important so first work is speculum meditantis this is a french work and this talks about the vices of time yes you can say this works talks about vices of time 
and then we have next one work that is Vox Clementis and this is Latin work and this work deals with kingship and ecclesiastical issues with Taylor rebellion and this is satire on clergy class and then we have Confessio Amantis so this is a kind of confession and this is 30, uh, 33,000 lines long and this written in octoslavic couplet yes so you have to only remember these uh, these works only uh, you have to remember the title of these work and um, yes confess you ament ament is this is a kind of lover's confession and this is the very first work in mythical background that is going to uh, that, that is going to mention a mythical character like Venus goddess of love and now we have next one uh, author this is uh, yes this is really important William Langland now I'm going to talk about William Langland so he is really important and most probably he was born near Malvern yes he was born nearly Malvern and he was born in 13 somewhere you will find 13 30 uh, 13 32 to 1400 and somewhere you will find 1325 to 1390 but I am going to tell you uh, this is 1325 to 1390 but um, uh, never focus on the uh, uh, date of birth and date of death on William Langland and now we are going to talk about we will find the three version of this work that is really important this is vision of William concerning Pierce the plowman so uh, so this is a really important work and uh, and this is a work that you will find uh, the, this work has three versions a b and c there's three versions uh, are available of this work and this is divided into video and vita the meaning of video is vision and the meaning of vita is life so you can easily see this this is given on your screen and william langland in this work william langland saw eight visions how many visions so eight eight visions and then you have the work is written in Two dialects this is southern and midland English so this is a kind of mixture of two type of uh, dialects and then I'm going to talk about in this work here uh, in this dream allegorical work he begins the line the voice of him that crinth in the wilderness prepare you the way of Lord so this is a kind of work that focuses on poor peasant and yes hardship of poor peasant so this work deals with the terrible hardship of the poor peasant and this work in this work long langland attacks on the abuses of the time like greed hypocrisy clergy and materialism and tyranny of the ruling class so in this work you will you will also say the poem is in two distinct part the first containing the vision uh, that is the vision of payers and then we have second series so this is vision vita called the search of dowel do wet and do best so the meaning of search of do well do wet and do best the meaning is do well do better do best so this is the meaning of uh, yes and in this work you will find the uh, folks are working in the field this is the very first vision field full of folk and this work is uh, the setting of this work is mal Vern hill where langland was born so uh, this is a kind of work that is set uh, that set in Malvern Hill, hill and uh, the field is full with folk and this is the time of morning yes this is the time of morning this is the morning time and then um, seven deadly sins are also depicted in this work so the seven deadly sins of this work are so uh, these seven deadly sins are pride you can note down if you really want you can pause the video so pride luxury then envy then wrath and then we have avarice and then we have gluttony and then sloth so these are the seven deadly sin so these are also mentioned in this work and this work is really important because this work is divided into pauses p 
a double s u s yes this is this work is divided into pauses and in fifth pauses you will found a really important line and this is in whose hand are in uh, sorry in whose hand are inequities whose right land is full of gifts so these are the these are the lines from pauses fifth so dear learners this work is really important yes really really important that deals with the hardships and problems of poor pleasant and now we have next one work so this is morte de arthur so dear learners the morte de arthur this is a work by thomas mallory and he was born in 1415 yes he was born in 1415 and died in 1471 so we have the next name this is uh, le morte de arthur by thomas mallory and the meaning of le morte de arthur is the death of arthur and in this work in this work uh, yes the death of arthur the whole book is all about the king arthur and his noble knight in the the knights of round table and uh, in this work if we are going to talk about so it is the compilation of traditional tales about the uh, legend like king arthur guinevere lancelot and knights of the uh, round table that i have already mentioned here and now we are going to talk about this work was published in 1485 and uh, this work is in middle english language yes this work is in middle english language and this work is in eight book how many books are there in the uh, limorte the arthur so in the, the limorte the arthur we will find eight books are there the uh, you can say the different name has been given for every separate book so eight books are there and uh, you can say caxton converted it into 21 books yes william caxton because in 1485 william caxton published this work morte de arthur this work was published by publisher of this work is mort uh, william caxton and he has converted this book into 21 books eight were uh, eight books were there but he converted it into 21 books so dear learners this is all about age of chaucer and we have some important line from age of chaucer time and tide wait for no man the life is so short the craft so long to learn and gladly wold he learn and gladly teach he was as fresh as in the month of may people can die of mere imagination women desire six thing they want their husband to be brave wise rich generous obedient to wife and lovely in uh, and lively in bed the greatest scholars are not usually the wisest people so then we have the greatest scholars are not wisely people so yes this is another uh, line from his work and then the guilty think about talk is themselves talk is of themselves and nowhere so busy a man as he he that nab and yet he seemed wiser than he was and yet he had a tomb of gold party so these are some important line from uh, chaucer's work and now this is uh, this is all for today and we will meet in next class so i think uh, aapko class pasand aayi hogi aur dosto agar aapko class meri pasand aayi so main aapse guzarish karna chahunga agar aap meri classes ko join karna chahte hain so dear learners कंप्लीट क्लासेज मेरी अवेलेबल हैं अन अकेडमी प्लस पर सो यू आर मोस्ट वेलकम थैंक यू ऑल हैव अ गुड डे